Please stand, praise God from whom all blessings flow. of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praises. Please remain standing as we sing the old Negro spiritual Kumbaya, my Lord.
praise you. We'll lead us in prayer in the morning scripture. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father, we thank you for this blessed and beautiful day. But most of all, we thank you for your son Jesus who died that made this day possible. We thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. In your word it says, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come by Mount Zion. Lord, Remember all of your children around the world. All the turmoil and the wars and the ups and downs that we face. We know that you are a prayer answering God. In your word it says, seek not and ask and you will hear our prayer. We thank you for what you have brought us from last week up until this present time. But Father, there are those who are looking at us and we just ask Father that you know what they stand in need of and we just, just ask that God will bless them remember the sick among us and Lord we just ask that God remember our children the many obstacles that they face we know that you will bring them through we thank you for the choir, we, we, we thank you for the hymns, we thank you for our pastor and his family, for each family here. Lord, we give you the praise because if it wasn't for you on our side, where would we be? And as we come together to praise and worship you, but when we leave this place, please be with us as we go and face another week know that you'll be on our side and walk with us and direct our path. You know, we can give you all the praise and we thank you. We bless and magnify your holy and righteous name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I like reading your hearing the 34th Psalms, which says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I read Psalms 34. One through nine. We greet you this morning <clears throat> in the joy of Jesus. And certainly we say thank you so very, very much for your continued support of the ministries here at the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church located at 1305 East Chevy Street in Florence, South Carolina. We're still requesting the assistance from our membership as we prepare to host the 2022 Walk to Health in conjunction with the PD Medical Professional Association here on the grounds of our church. The event will take place on April 2nd from 8.30 a.m. until 11 a.m with the keynote speaker being Dr. Linda Bell, who is the Chief South Carolina Epidemiologist. We ask that you please contact any member of the Health and Wellness Ministry who are positioned at the table in the North Exit. Sign us in every morning. Please sign up with them to let them know if you're able and willing to help us host 
this always grand event. I want to say thank you to the male chorus for joining me as we went over to Bethel Hill to support one of the sons of Mount Zion as they celebrated the 144th church anniversary. We had a grand old time and I think Samson was quite pleased that we came over to help him out. So continue to pray that he will do well in his ministry and thank you so much, Mel Chorus. We ask that you keep Sister Anna Cooper Johnson and Sister Sarah Scott Lee and the Cooper family in prayer as they prepare for a graveside service for their father at 1 p.m. today at the Mount Zion United Methodist Church Cemetery. Additionally, we solicit your prayers for the Moses family as Sister Brenda and her family prepares to bury her nephew, who is Reverend Frank Moses' son, on Tuesday at the 11 a.m. 11 a.m. at the McConnell Cemetery in Marion. We're also requesting your prayers for Sister Rose Keith, Brother Alfred Wells, Sister Lydia Foxworth, and all of those who remain on our sick and shut-in list. Please, my brothers and sisters, continue to pray ye one for another and pray for this world and all of this violence and turmoil that's going on over in Ukraine. Uh, if you've got any kind of humanity in you at all, you cannot help but to pray for and be concerned about the welfare of those folk. Uh, who are being bullied, who are being bullied just because they can be. Um, so we pray that uh, God will do what he needs to do to put Putin in check when he needs to do it. Uh, we just got to remember that God is still in full control and all things still work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purposes. We come now to our altar call prayer moment. as the musicians grant us some appropriate music. Think about how good we have it. It's easy to think about all of the bad things that happen in our lives. Because nobody likes the bad stuff to happen. But don't get so caught up in having what you want and being blessed all the time that you forget to realize just how good we truly have it. God has been and is still being mighty, mighty good to us. It was he who watched over us all night long. It was he who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. It was he who has kept us through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And all we can say is look where he brought us from. If you ever been through anything in your life, just say, look where he brought me from. Look what he brought me through and Look where he has brought me to. Look at me this morning. Song says, could have been dead and gone. But we're living testimonies that Jesus is real. Join me now as we pray individually for those who are going through what they're going through, for those who are dealing with sickness and bereavement and and even those who look like they have it all together, they need our prayers. Because everybody that we know is dealing with something in their life. So join me, if you will, for prayer. Let us pray.
most gracious and everlasting God. It is in the blessed name of Jesus that we stop just to say thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for how you've kept us made a way for us to make it back to the sanctuary one more time. Thank you, God. Thank you for looking beyond our faults, still supplying each and every one of our needs. Song saying, I don't feel no ways tired. We don't feel no ways tired, Lord. Because we've come too far from where we started from. Nobody told us the road would be easy. But we're here this morning. We're praying this morning. We're saying thank you this morning because we don't believe you brought us this far just to leave us. Thank you, God. Look inside of our hearts. Examine us. To find anything that, that is not pleasing in your sight, we ask this morning that you pluck it out. When you take out the bad stuff, fill us up with more love, more peace, more understanding, more compassion. Create in us clean hearts and renew the right kind of spirits in our flow. Stop by Mount Zion one more time. Touch us one by one, name by name. Give us what we need. To continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. Bless us with peace. Bless us with love. Bless us with understanding. Forgiveness. Compassion. Teach us. Master, how to love one another like you love us all. Go into the hospitals. Let the sick know that healing is still in your garment. Go by the nursing homes, go by the jail houses. Let them know that you can still have mercy on their soul. While we are here this morning, be it live or virtually, transform us, make us what you would have us to be. And we still a work in progress. We know that you're not through with us yet, but we also know that when you get through with us, we shall come forth as terrible. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen.
Dios. in the last Sunday of Black History Month. And like many of you, I'm sure, I always think about the fact that we got the shortest month of the year to recognize all of the many achievements of black folk in America. While the reality is that there would be no America without the contributions of our people. I thought about what I wanted to say to you this morning as a black history message. My mind went to a lot of different places and I experienced a lot of emotions. And I'm still fighting to keep the radical grays from coming out this morning. But you see, when I think about the way black folk have been treated in this country, after all we've done to make it what it is. 
when I think of all of the blood, sweat, and tears that black folk have shed only to be treated like third or fourth, fourth class citizens, not even second class citizens. When I think about the fact that police officers have taken the lives of so many black boys and black men for so long without any accountability that it became understood that nothing would happen to them. So much so that when Derek Chauvin got convicted in George Floyd case, this entire nation was surprised. When I think about all that African Americans have had to go through and put up with just to survive in this country, it's really hard for the radical not to come out. And then, then, then on yesterday, as my wife and I just rode out for the afternoon, some redneck in a souped up pickup truck with a flag flying from the truck bed that said, quote, our votes, our nation stolen. Passed the truck on the highway. And we pull over at the gas station. And this guy pulled up, parked in beside my car, revved up his loud engine. Loud. Y'all know how them boys, them country boys do them big old trucks. Pull up beside us, never got out of the truck, looked at us, then backed up and sped away. And that's when I told my wife, I said, you know, Liz, it's folk like that who make it necessary for you to be fully dressed every time you leave home. Amen. And if y'all don't know what fully dressed means, you'll catch that later. So you see, stuff like that coupled with my own experiences in America as a black boy and as a black man make it real hard for the radical in me to not come out. And the truth of the matter is that sometimes I can't keep it from coming out and sometimes I don't want to keep it from coming out. And the reality is that many of you deal with the same thing. I'm not the only one who has to fight back those emotions. But my message this morning is that in spite of all that we have to deal with in this supposed land of the free and the home of the brave, we must press on. The book of Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 of the New King James Version reads like this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, my, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. We must press on. At the time of this text, the children of Israel find themselves camped out along the east bank of the Jordan River, which is pretty literally almost at the door of the promised land. It has been now 40 years since they were forced to wander in the wilderness because of their lack of trust in God. And after 40 years of leading them through the wilderness, raising a new generation that God had prepared for the promised land, Moses now dies. Moses, who to us, the human mind, would have thought deserved to make it to the promised land. He dies at the age of 120 years, and there's nobody left to lead the children of Israel. Moses had served well. The Bible even calls him the Lord's servant. God had even taken Moses up on the mountain and let him see the promised land with his own eyes. But before they ever got to experience life in the promised land, Moses dies. The Bible says that after the death of Moses, the Lord spoke to Joshua, who had been Moses' assistant, and he said, now that my servant Moses is dead, you must lead my people across the Jordan into the land that I am giving them. In other words, God said, Joshua, you must press on. God had prepared a new generation for the promised land. That old crowd who didn't trust him 40 years ago when he first set things up for them was now all dead and gone. Moses.
Moses was going, and Joshua was God's chosen one to lead the people into the promised land. And as I read this text, and I reread this text, and I examined and I re-examined this text, while I thought about black history, I could not help but to remember the plight of black America after the death of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. And you don't have to agree with me, but I don't believe that we who are God's chosen people have yet to this day learned to trust God enough for him to assign us a true successor to Dr. King. In other words, we're just like the children of Israel and we are wandering in the wilderness because we don't trust God like he needs us to. And like I said earlier, you don't have to agree with me, but from 1968 until the time that Barack Obama got elected, we did have some good folk who did some good things for blacks in this country, but there was no one clear-cut leader in the African-American community. And the God I serve, he put Barack in the White House because that's not some black folk to have done by ourselves. God put him in the White House and even at that, many of us complained saying he wasn't black enough. And after Barack, I believe that John Lewis was the next best chance that we had of getting a leader for our black community whose head and heart was in the right place. But just like Moses, just like Martin, he too had to die. But I came by to tell you this morning that our promised land is still waiting and we must keep on pressing on. But you see, the promised land for us is not necessarily a parcel of real estate or a region of land. I want you to think about the possibility that our promised land is a land where justice and equality for all people is the order of the day on every day. Maybe our promised land is a land like Martin dreamed of where black folk and white folk can live together and work together and play together like brothers and sisters. Maybe our promised land is a land where black folk and all people of color will indeed be judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. Maybe, just maybe, that's what our promised land is supposed to look like. And trust me, I know that Martin King is dead. Ralph Abernathy is dead. Rosa Parks dead. John Lewis dead. Elijah Cummings dead. Thurgood Marshall dead. Richard Allen dead. And I don't know who God is talking to like he talked to Joshua. I don't know who God has appointed. But I do know that it won't be anybody who does not trust in God. I do know it won't be anyone who will not allow the Lord to order his steps. I do know there will not be anyone with personal and selfish motives. Don't you understand that there are folk everywhere jockeying to be called the leader of the black community? We got that going on even here in Florence. God has given us a black mayor and a majority black city council and we still not together. Say amen, Walls. Amen. We've got some folks serving in the state house and in the halls of the United States Congress who look like us but have no regard for us. My brothers and sisters just came by to tell you this morning that we must continue to press on towards the promised land. First thing we have to realize is that we have to get up and go into the promised land. If we look at this text, the King James Version, God told Joshua, arise and go over this Jordan. 
Brothers and sisters, the promised land is there for us because God has already promised it to us. But it is not going to get up and come and get us. We've got to get up and go cross this Jordan. We sit back. Won't go vote. The numbers dictate that South Carolina should never have a Republican governor, but we stay home. Especially the young folk whose lives are being more affected by these policies. We sit back and do nothing. All of this stuff that these Republicans are trying to put in place to keep us from voting, that's our River Jordan that we got to cross. All of these state legislatures who want to dictate what part of history they won't taught in the schools because it will expose their ancestors, that's our Jordan that we have to cross. All of these critical race theory issues that folks try to bring up and use against us, that's our Jordan. A push now in the city of Florence to have non-partisan city elections because black folk now have a majority on council. That's a Jordan that we got across. But God is telling us, in spite of all of this gerrymandering they're doing in states all over this country to keep us from being elected, God is telling us to get up and go over this Jordan. And if you trust me, I'll put you in the promised land. So you see, we got to keep pressing on. And then the text says, Thou and this people to the land which I do give to them. God is not saying to all people, but he says to this people. He's saying my people in the New King James Version, we've got to believe and we've got to understand that when God says this people, he is talking about us. God didn't give the promised land to everyone, but he gave it to those who he had prepared for it. Those who he raised up to be ready to receive it. And those who have a track record of trusting and believing in him. My brothers and sisters, that's us. I don't know if there will be a time when we ever get another leader and we can be on one accord like Martin King. But as far as I'm concerned, my leader is God Almighty, and I'm going to trust him with all I have. And all I know is that where he leads me, I will follow. I'm going to follow God's will, and I'm going to do it God's way. God has promised never to leave us. Didn't he tell Joshua, just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I will not fail you and I will not abandon you. You just be strong and very courageous. Now, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what God's word means to you. But as far as I'm concerned, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. I know that life in these United States is no easy thing for black folk. But I came by to tell you that we've got to keep pressing our way. All we have to do is look at our history to see that God always keeps his word to us. Don't you know that but for the hand of the Lord being upon us, all of our ancestors would have perished during the middle passage on the way over here. But for the hand of the Lord, we would have never survived slavery. But for the hand of the Lord, the civil rights movement and our leaders would have been so discouraged that they would have given up and thrown in the towel. But for the hand of the Lord, we would have crumbled during the Great Depression, during, during Reaganomics, during police brutality, during that MAGA movement, and everything else they've thrown our way. But I just need to remind you this morning that the hand of the Lord is upon us. And all we need to do is keep on pressing our way and keep on trusting in God 
and we will reach our promised land. And just like he promised, God said he'll be with us all of the way. And then as we talk about black history, I remember how the old folk used to say, they used to say there'd be a great camp meeting in the promised land. No more crying over there. No more dying over there. When we all get together. What a day of rejoicing it'll be. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to rejoicing in the promised land. I'm looking forward to partying in the promised land. I'm looking forward to talking and walking with Jesus in the promised land. But if we ever gonna get there, we gotta keep on pressing our way. God bless you.
Oh, 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 oh,